game. Today we're going to study more about the first law, and specifically we're going to learn about free body diagrams, statics, which is a branch of physics that deals with things that are in equilibrium, and finally this concept of equilibrium. And at the end of it, we'll work through a worksheet together, and then you'll be able to go to your homework. So let's start off here. First off, what is a free body diagram? Because that's going to be central to what we do today. A free body diagram is a tool, very useful tool for visualizing the forces that are acting on an object. They're pretty easy to make, but like I say, they're very useful for figuring out how systems are interacting with themselves and with other things. Uh, so you need to be able to make free body diagrams. And I assure you, it's not very difficult, but they're still very useful. So let's imagine here we have a two kilogram mass, which is just sitting on the table. And we want to figure out the forces that are acting on it. Now, it's just sitting there. It's not going anywhere. So there's 20 newtons of, of uh, gravitational force acting on it. Remember, we learned this last time how to convert two kilograms into newtons. So 20 newtons of gravitational force pulling down on it, trying to push it through the table. And then the table itself is in the way, so the table is pushing upward on it. Uh, that's the forces acting. That's all the forces that we have in this case. Um, now, the way we draw this, okay, so here's a piece of paper. So we treat the object as just a dot. That's it. And we call this a free body diagram because whatever that object is, we assume that it is free to move in any way. And any forces can act on it. We just begin with just this body in space. And now we start to keep track of the, uh, the forces acting on it. And these forces are vectors, so they take the form of arrows. And the arrows always point away from the object. So in this case, we have force of gravity or the weight, which equals 20 newtons, and that's pulling the object down. Now, in an upward direction, we have the force of the table, the table force, and that also equals 20 newtons. Now, as I've drawn this, the arrows are the same length. The arrow downward, that represents 20 newtons, so the arrow upward is also the same length, 20 newtons. And when we add these together, we can see that the net force on the, uh, uh, on the object is zero. Uh, it's like a shoving match or a tug of war, which is a tie. So the net force on the object is zero. That's a free body diagram for that thing sitting on the table there. Okay. Now, what if I come in and I push on the side of the weight? So I put my hand in here and I try to slide it toward the side of the table. But I'm not pushing very hard. So I'm pushing on it very slightly, but it's not enough to, to break it loose from the, uh, uh, from the surface of the table. Now, how would that appear? Well, that means that I have applied a small force to the side. That's the force of Mr. Robinson, MR. And we'll say that that is one newton, okay, to the side. But the thing doesn't move because there's friction on the table, but friction between the table and the, and the mass. So that means that there's a frictional force over here, F sub F, which is also 1 Newton. So we've added some forces. The thing is still not moving. The forces still all cancel out to zero, uh, but we have kept track of all of the, the forces acting on it. Okay. So you are the free body. You're sitting in a chair. We want to make a diagram, a free body diagram of all the forces acting on you as you sit there. Okay? Now, um, I want you to pause the video at this point, uh, make that free body diagram, and then start it up again. Okay, so uh, start the video again, and we'll see what it looks like. So this is a free body diagram of you sitting in a chair. And this is it. The dot represents you. Gravity is pulling you down, but the chair is pushing you up, so you uh, are not moving, and, uh, and, that's the, uh, and that's the free body diagram. So now I would like you to make a free body diagram of the chair with you sitting on it. And again, I want you to pause the video now uh, and make that free body diagram, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so start up the, uh, the video again, and here's the free body diagram. Ignore that. That was an error. Um, okay, so here's the free body diagram of the chair. So this is the chair. Um, and the forces on the chair are the weight of the chair itself. So that's F sub G. That's the weight of the chair. Um, 
pulling the chair down. And then there's also the force of you sitting on the chair and that is pushing the chair down. So there's two forces acting downward on the chair. The chair's weight itself from gravity and the force of you sitting on the chair. Now, countering those forces is the force on the floor pushing up on the chair. And if you notice here, the total length of the force from the floor is the same as the length of the gravity. That's two squares on my little graph paper here, plus six squares from the force of you. I guess it's a fairly heavy chair. And the, uh, the force going upward is two, four, six, eight. Uh, take my word for it. That's eight squares. I wanted to make sure I didn't go off the top of the screen here. Okay, so this is what the, uh, the free body diagram looks like for the chair with you sitting on it. Um, now, all of this, believe it or not, has to do with statics. And statics is the branch of physics uh, that's about objects that are in equilibrium. Okay, that's helpful. What's equilibrium? Okay, fine. So, when all the forces acting on an object are in balance, that means that the object is in equilibrium. All right, I'm going to say that again. This is a definition you've got to know. Equilibrium is a concept you have to know and be able to recognize because it's not quite as simple as you may think. So when all forces acting on an object are in balance, in other words, the net force is zero, that means that the object is in equilibrium. So that weight that we had on the table, that's in equilibrium because the downward force of gravity is the same as the upward force from the table. These... Uh, free body diagrams we've just made, like of you in the chair, you are in equilibrium. The chair that you're sitting on is in equilibrium because the forces pushing it downward toward the, the floor are the same as the floor pushing upward on it. So all these objects that we've seen before are in equilibrium. All right now, when an object is in equilibrium, it is either stationary or it is moving at a constant velocity. And that second one is the one that may not be immediately obvious. So it's obvious that a, a thing that is just sitting there not moving, that's, uh, that's an equilibrium. Uh, but it can also be an equilibrium if it is moving in constant velocity, meaning going in a straight line at a constant speed in an unchanging direction. Okay, so an object in equilibrium does not accelerate. Now, that's obvious if the object is just sitting there on the table not moving. But this also applies if the thing is moving at constant velocity. So like a ball rolling across the floor, not speeding up, not slowing down, that ball is in equilibrium even though it is moving because it is not accelerating. Okay, so an object in equilibrium does not accelerate, but the converse is also true. If an object is not accelerating, we know that it is in equilibrium. We know just by looking at it that all the forces that are acting on it balance out. So let's look at a, a situation here of an airplane, all right? So an airplane sitting on the runway, not moving, is in equilibrium. But when the pilot releases the brakes and pushes the engines up to full power, now it's not in equilibrium anymore. Uh, we know that there's a downward force from gravity. We know there's an upward force from the runway supporting the, the plane. But now when we push the power up, now that the thrust from the engines is trying to push the plane forward, and there's nothing holding the plane back, so the airplane starts to accelerate down the runway and go flying. Okay, so that, that plane would no longer be in equilibrium. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is make a free body diagram of this airplane on the runway as the, pow uh, the pilot pushes the power up to maximum and releases the brakes. So here is the free body diagram. This is the airplane. It's sitting on the runway, so there's gravity pulling it down, and it's, the runway is holding it upward, so the vertical uh, forces cancel out. But there's thrust from the engines, which is trying to make the thing go forward, and that's not balanced by anything. So the net force on this is forward, and the airplane is going to accelerate down the runway. Now let's look at this one. What about when the airplane is halfway across the Atlantic Ocean, flying from New York to London? It's at 30,000 feet of altitude. The uh, engines are making thrust, 40,000 newtons of engine thrust, and it's flying along at 700 kilometers per hour. And it's been flying along at 700 kilometers per hour for an hour, and it's going to keep on flying at 700 kilometers per hour for, for a couple more hours. It's just cruising along at 30,000 feet on its way. So the question is, what is the force produced by air drag? 
What do I mean by this? Well, imagine if you're flying along this fast and you roll down the window and you stick your hand out the window like you're driving down the highway. You would feel a lot of air force pushing your hand backward toward the tail of the airplane. And that air drag is acting on the entire plane. So the question here is, given these, uh, these numbers, how many newtons of force are acting, pushing the airplane backwards? How okay, so uh, unfreeze it and let's see the free body diagram, how we make it. Okay, so here's the airplane. And even though it's flying along, gravity is still acting on it. So there's still a force of gravity acting on it. Now, opposing that force of gravity is lift from the wings. So there is still an upward force acting on it, but it comes from the wings uh, being pushed up by the air rather than by the wheels sitting on the runway. But that upward force is still there. It keeps the airplane from falling into the ocean. Now, we know we have 40,000 newtons of thrust, 40K newtons of thrust. But here's the thing, we also know that this airplane is in equilibrium because it is flying at constant velocity. It's 700 kilometers per hour, it's not speeding up and it's not slowing down. So that means there has to be a backward force, which is from the air drag, and it has to be equal to the amount of thrust. So it has to be 40,000 newtons of, of drag. Now let's think about this. What if there was more than 40,000 newtons of drag. That would mean that there's more, a net backward force on the plane and the plane would be slowing down. It wouldn't be in equilibrium anymore. Likewise, if there's less than 40,000 newtons of, of uh, drag, that means that there's more thrust than there is drag and it's going to be accelerating and speeding up just like it did when we started the takeoff roll. So this is what the free body diagram should look like for the plane that's in, uh, in cruise at altitude. And from this and our understanding of equilibrium, we can see that the air drag has to be 40,000 newtons. Okay, now we're going to go on to a worksheet here. And uh, this is the story of little Nellie Newton who wants to be a gymnast. Um, and we need to figure out, basically using our techniques of free body diagrams, um, what the force is in these scales that uh, that is that are supporting her, okay? And I want you to pause the video here and uh, um, and then um, figure out what the the force is in on is on all these. Now this one is a little bit strange. There's two scales, one stacked one right on top of the other, and she's hanging from each of them. So one scale is hanging from the other, and she's hanging below them. This she's also hanging from two scales, uh, but they're they're both uh, yeah from two scales, but they're side by side. Okay, so pause the video here, and I will reveal the answers. Okay, first one is 300 newtons, because all of her weight is being supported by that same uh, scale. This one here, each of these two scales is supporting 150 newtons. So there's 150 newtons acting up here, and another 150 newtons acting up here for a total of 300 newtons, and she is supported. Okay. Um, this is the kind of odd one, it turn, and it surprises students sometimes. These both read 300 newtons, and the reason is because this scale right here is supporting all of her weight, just like this scale is. It has, this scale has no idea what it's fastened to up above. All it knows is that all of her weight is hanging from this scale, and it's the same story for this one. So both scales read 300 newtons, because each of them is supporting her full weight. 300 newtons. Okay, now we move on to uh, Burl the painter. And Burl the painter is standing on a platform and he's halfway between these two scales here. And we're going to assume that everything is, uh, um, is evenly balanced and it's not like the plank is heavy on one end. Since he's standing in the center here, um, yeah, pause the video at this point and answer all these questions. So this one is 500 newtons. Since he's in the middle, the load has to be balanced. And since this is 500 newtons, this one also be, happens, has to be 500 newtons. That means that the total weight of burl and the staging and the plank and everything has to be 1,000 newtons. 500 plus 500 is 1,000. Now, if he starts moving toward the end, this scale is supporting more of his weight. But the total weight still has to be 1,000 newtons. And it's in equilibrium. So... Uh, this one then has to be 830 newtons because this weight, uh, this scale is showing zero newtons, and this one is showing the full thousand, and that's it.
Here's our first one. We learned about free body diagrams and how to use them. We dipped our toe into statics and we learned about equilibrium, the uh, definition of it and how we can use it with free body diagrams to analyze situations and learn things.